Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about coastal duty modeling with airborne LiDAR, terrestrial LiDAR, and some structure for motion multi-view stereo or SFMMVS. I'm not sure if you can see the mouse pointer. So the sand dunes are usually like a challenge for photogrammetry because they are quite homogeneous. They don't get good response in terms of spectral response. So you don't usually get good image matching. So we, we kind of took this as a challenge and we wanted to do this comparison with some LiDAR data that we had from another grant project with these uh, new drones that we, we just had acquired. Then we, we went for the field, we collected some uh, LiDAR data, actually some drone data and some terrestrial LiDAR data to compare the three data sets. So this is the study area. I go back to the methods in a, in a second. We're in South in Brazil, just south of the very, very famous island of Florianópolis. And this is the Garopabadun field where we studied. We have the 2010 airborne LiDAR data that we collected in another grant. And this one is the DEM data from the drone data from the SFM MVS method. And here you can see a small area selected. This is for the terrestrial LiDAR survey. Okay, so we used a LiDAR data from 2010 that was uh, uh, collected in a previous grant. It has a density point of about two points per square meter. Okay, it's not much, but uh, it's what we had, what we could buy at the moment. And then we went back in, in February 2019 for a field work where we took a, a Fargo Focus terrestrial LiDAR with us and we did 110 scan positions in that small area I just showed you. It took us three days to, to collect all that data and then a lot more to align up the data into a single point cloud. We also took a, a DJI Phantom drone and we, in about three hours, we did six flights and collect 810 images for the, the reconstruction. In terms of software, we rely a little bit on, on proprietary software, Ferrocene, Edges of Metashape, Last Tools, and mostly all the analysis we're running in open source software, mostly GRASS, GIS, and, and white box tools, all glued together with uh, Python scripts and Jupyter notebooks, and all these notebooks are, are available. Okay, so these are the flight lines that we did, so six flight missions. The points here are the ground control points that we collected to georeference all the, the, the images. Six control points collected with differential GPS. You can see one of them, one of the targets here in the, one of the drone images. And also you can see some of the sedimentary structure of the dunes here. And I say this because this will be important in a second. So going up right into the results, this is the TLS, the terrestrial LiDAR, and the SFM DEMs. I mean, from, from the image, you really can't see much of a difference, except maybe if you pay close attention to this part here. Again, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse pointer. If you can see this uh, in the bottom southeast-ish part, there's a little bit of roughness caused by a small, uh, very low vegetation, but they're really, really similar, at least to the visual inspection. If we calculate surface roughness, and I am defining surface roughness here as the standard deviation of slope in a five by five window, we can see that the, in figure A, you have the TLS roughness. So it's really, really smooth. It's a really nice data set. It's really smooth. It only gets uh, high roughness values in the vegetated areas, in the dune crests, in the dune uh, break of slope in the foot of the dunes. Whereas the SFM DEM has a small scale roughness all around the DEM. You can see that it's not really as clear as the TLS. So it's, it's a bit harder to like try to derive dune crests automatically or something like that from that DEM. So I use the feature preserving DEM smoothing algorithm from our friend Joe Lindsay. And I try all kinds of window sizes and parameters. And then we get now you, you can see the in figure D, you can see the plot of the, all the parameters and how they change. And we end up with a with these parameters here, a K of 17 by 17 window, 20 degree threshold and five iterations to get to this figure C, which is the SFM DEM filtered, you know, the roughness of the SFM filtered DEM. So it gets really more 
a cleaner look, not, not much of that roughness scattered all around. It's, it gets really better and it gets really nicer to see the results. So this is really good because you don't, it's a really good algorithm because you don't like you don't smooth your DM, you don't lose your, your features, you don't lose your breaks of slopes, and you still get to a, a nicer and smoother surface without uh, losing much and without getting much uh, of an error. Now, these are the differences between the terrestrial lighter and the SFM DEMs. Uh, the whole area is in gray. I cut it out a, a small area inside just to avoid any, any edge effect, any border effect. And uh, you can see that it's kind of a bluish, reddish tone. So ideally, it would be white without any difference, but it, it has a, a bit of a difference. Not much. If you look at all the pixels, it goes from minus 1.5 meters to plus. 5.5 meters, but those are just you know, 300 pixels with a larger difference in to a larger universe. So actually the difference are more into 30 to 50 centimeters. So the SFM DM is a bit higher in general than the TLS. I'm not sure exactly if that's because of the uh, digital referencing or not. And that white, that reddish bluish tone is because the point clouds the individual scans are really hard to align, and we're talking about 110 individual scans. So it's quite hard to align that manually, and dunes are not the perfect environment for, for a terrestrial lighter. These, these lighters were made for engineering and architectural scans, so they, they rely on sharp features like corners of walls and, and pipes or whatever to align the the point cloud, so we end up with a little bit of misalignment. But in the end, the, the, the point of this is that we consider that the SFM DM is a really good result. It really matches the TLS, which is a higher resolution, a higher uh, accuracy data. So we get the, uh, the idea that we can then use the SFM DM to compare with the larger ALS DLM, the Airborne LiDAR DM. And there it is. So here in A, we have the ALS DM, the Airborne Ladder from 2010, the SFM DM from 2019. The color scheme, the color scheme is always the same. And here are the differences. We can see some major positive differences, which are obviously expected since the dunes are migrating. So we have accumulation of sand here in this really uh, kind of central dune, as you call it semi-accumulation here. This is a vegetated ridge, so the sand is accumulating over the vegetation. And we have some accumulation here over the road. Also, if we could zoom in, we could see that the road here is pretty much in a gray color, meaning that there is absolutely no difference between the SFM DEM and the airborne LiDAR DEM over the road. So that is a stable feature, means that we have a good match all around. Uh, if we look at histograms of the differences, you can see that there are a little bit of difference, but the histograms are really similar. And in terms of sand volume, there is no much of a difference. It's about 0.2% of decrease in nine, in nine years. So that is something that we must consider. What, what's happening? Are the dunes not migrating? Is that not sand coming into the sand dune? What's, what's really happening here? Because we would expect some difference. The point is that of course, the dunes are migrating. We can see that from the images. We can see that from the DMs. We have here the dune crests, and we calculated the dune migration. So it's about five meters per year, consistent with other studies in the same area. So why there is not, not much of a difference in terms of volume? Okay, so we, <clears throat> we can see, sorry, we can see the uh, here two profiles showing the, the dune migration. Here in these photos, we can see sand dunes, uh, actually. Uh, sand fences made to, to uh, accumulate the dune over, over the fences. And here are the front part of the sand field here at, at that same road where I show you that picture. And the municipality of the, the, the region, the local government has to remove the sand constantly from this area. Otherwise the road would be blocked. So pretty much all the sand that comes into the sand field, into the dune field is removed from its front part by the municipality. That's why we don't have much of a volume difference, even with uh, almost 10 year difference. 
here jumping onto the, some conclusions really uh, quickly. This, uh, this two are, are quite interesting for us. First, that we, we did get a good image matching in all of the in all areas of the, the, the dunes, mostly because we could see the superficial features. So here's some superficial features like footprints, sandbar tracks, and the sedimentary stratification. And this is uh, really nice because when we submitted the grant proposal, one of the reviewers said that this idea that we had was completely nonsense and that we shouldn't do it because dunes are homogeneous and we wouldn't be able to get a good image matching and we shouldn't spend any money doing that. But we were a bit stubborn and we did it anyway and we got a good result. So, and one of the uh, key findings is that, you know, we, we usually think of, of sand uh, field trips and we try to, to plan our field trips for, for good weather to get you know, really nice sunny weather and not going out in the field during the rain, of course. But sometimes with a little bit of, of, of overcast skies and some light rain, it can actually be, be helpful in this case, in this kind of environment, a light rain would be good because it will, it will provide, a, a, you will be able to see the stratification of the dunes. Of the, if it's really, really dry and really hot, you have that loose layer of sand over the dunes and you won't be able to see anything. So with a little bit of, of humidity, you can see things and you can get a really nice result. Uh, we validated the SFMDM against the, the LIDAR, the terrestrial LIDAR, and we get good results, small errors, and the FPD denoise algorithm from John Lindsay is really a good idea to, to denoise these DMs and, and still preserve all the features. Okay, we, we talked about the volumes, that it, they're really not changing much because the municipality, the local government has to remove the sand. And just in terms of, of uh, cost benefit comparison, of course, LIDAR, airborne LIDAR is really good, it's really fantastic, we all love it, but it is, it is of course, expensive. And especially if you are in uh, where I am in Brazil or in any other countries where we don't have uh, government or statewide LIDAR survey programs where we have to actually buy those, those surveys, so they're really expensive. The terrestrial LIDAR, by its turn, it has sort of an intermediate cost, as you can rent, the equipment and do it yourself. But then you we, we will need a lot of time. You need more field work, you need more time. We took three days to collect all the 110 scan positions. So a lot more time. And with two or three students, uh, those that are my co-authors, working pretty much full time to align all the, all the individual point clouds, it took them about three weeks to get all that done. So a lot of, office work a lot of time. Whereas the SFM MVS uh, with drone board images, it's really cheaper, really, really cheaper. Um, with the, well, the money we pay for the TLS, we can buy another drone. And uh, in about three hours, we were able to collect all the data. And in another half day, we were able to process everything in a medium range workstation, not, not even talking about a really, really good computer. Um, and if you want to see a little bit more of it, all of this is published already since we did it in, 19, in 2019 and the conference was postponed. We already had that published in computer geosciences, the same, the same paper. You can uh, later massively we'll, we'll get, make the PDFs available so you can just go right to the DOI, DOI or there are also, there's also a preprint. So even if you're not able to access your severe journals, computer geosciences, there's a preprint here, the same, very same, uh, content and, and everything. And all the data sets are available in open topography, all the, the LiDAR data, terrestrial LiDAR, drones, all, everything is in open topography. And all the Jupyter notebooks that we used are in the supplemental material and also in a GitHub repo. So you can access everything and, and do it yourself or just see how we did things. And uh, I, will, I will end here. So thank you, thank you very much for your time. Also, you know, really nice to be here again with you guys. And uh, I believe we can have some questions. I usually don't use all my time anyway. <laughs>